Hey folks, today is computer weekend, so I'm going to be messing around with computers and getting things up and running that I really should have uh, for the past couple weeks now. Here we have my transfer PC. Now you may, those of you who've been watching for a while may notice that this Asus board looks familiar. It used to be in my LAN party PC. I was originally going to upgrade this thing to like an i5 and put a pretty decent graphics card in it and use it as a LAN party rig, but um, I really can't afford to do that. So what I'm going to do instead is just make do with what I have, sort of like what I did with my main computer, uh, except for the upgrading it to the i7 other than that, but yeah. Anyway, I'm going to make do with what I have. So what I've done is I've moved this Asus motherboard into my transfer PC since it has a Pentium dual core uh, for a CPU. Now for those of you who just joined, who just joined this channel, I have, sev I have several computers that I uh, dedicate to specific tasks because I have to. I can't always do it all on the same operating system or the same s computer with the same set of hardware. This one in particular, that is true. So I have this as my transfer PC. What my transfer PC does is it's a dedicated computer for transferring analog audio and analog video into digital format. And I use the best hardware that I can find to do that. And I don't mean best as in the most expensive. I mean best as in best performance and best sound and video quality and things like that. So that's what this machine's dedicated task is for. Now I'm going to just overview the machine. Uh, this Asus motherboard, as you guys, some of you guys know, used to be in my LAN party PC, but I've changed that. I've changed, I've repurposed this motherboard for this computer instead because the hardware just fits the job perfectly. So let's review this machine for those of you who haven't seen it before. This is my transfer PC. Start the power supply. It has an Acbell 550 watt power supply. These used to be in Java. Uh, workstations back in the day, back in like 2005 or whatever, and uh, they're commercial grade. They have very good circuit design. The cap, the capacitors are okay. Uh, I have one of these in my in my file server as well. They're they're good power supplies. Uh, they have very good they have very good protection and very good circuitry. So if you ever come across one, I'd say go for it. Because that is a because it's a commercial grade power supply, I need to, I needed to get an adapter to convert it from eight pin to four pin for the CPU connector. So there you have it. Other than that, it's just a regular power supply. I also needed Molex to uh, no, I didn't actually. I just needed a only one Molex to SATA adapter for the uh, DVD for the DVD burner up there. So it's a power supply I had to kind of adapt for modern uses. Here's the motherboard. It is an Asus P7H55MLE. Uh, it's a socket 1156 motherboard. So we're talking first generation Core i series stuff here. It has an aftermarket, really a really cheap aftermarket heatsink on it. Uh, I think I got this from CompUSA back when they back before they were Tiger Direct. Uh, and underneath this heatsink is a Pentium dual core. And that's why it's perfect for my transfer PC, because I don't really need much more than that for uh, the kind of stuff I do on here. But next to that, we have two gigs. Yes, two gigs of DDR3, something you don't see very often. We have two gigs of DDR3 uh, 1066 memory. This board has IDE and floppy still. I just noticed that. I forgot about that. <laughs> nice. And, uh, yeah, that's your basic setup. Uh, oh, yeah, and there's the uh, one terabyte Hitachi hard drive in there as well. So I have plenty of space uh, for uh, messing with all this stuff. That drive is from, like, 2011 or something. So I've had that drive a while. And this is what really makes... I could put any motherboard in here and do what I want to do with this computer. But what really makes this computer go are the cards I put in it. The one you see up top here is... A Turtle Beach Montego or Montego 2 sound card, one of the two. And this is one of the best sounding sound cards I've ever I've ever had. It just it sounds fantastic when you record to them. It also sound it also has pretty good MIDI if you use one for MIDI or a vintage machine, and it also sounds good when you play them back. I use this particular one for recording because the recording quality you get out of it is very, very good. 
and the uh, the frequency response is fantastic. I got these from a recycling center when I lived in Vermont for a while. So, thank you, RE Store. You guys are awesome. And of course, the heart of my uh, analog video processing is this Avermedia PVR 150 Plus. Aver TV, actually. This is this, believe it or not, is the TV tuner I got with my first ever custom build. And uh, it, it's been a fantastic TV tuner all that time. The PVR150 and 250 chipsets are fantastic. Not only does, not only does it uh, decode video pretty well, but it has a hardware MPEG-2 decoder, which means you get very, very smooth analog video out of it, which is why I still use this card today. It's fantastic for that. Other cards... There are other cards based on this chipset made by Hoppage and I think some other companies. Hoppage and Avermedia both make cards under this chipset and it's just a fantastic platform to uh, transfer video with. What's also nice is it has uh, has S-Video and composite and audio and stuff on it already too. It also has an FM radio. So it's a fully featured card for the time. That was like 2005 or 2006 when I first got it. But it still has its use today, transferring stuff. And you may notice an, em a, a, uh, an empty card slot here. Well, I have a FireWire card. I have some FireWire cards, but they're all PCI. So what I need to do is I need to order a FireWire 400 uh, PCI EX1 card and stick it in this particular slot here uh, so that I have FireWire. And what I use the FireWire for is for uh, transferring uh, stuff off of my Digital 8 camera. And not only that, but the Digital 8 camera I have can also be used as a pass-through. It's a, it's a Hitachi Digital 8 camcorder. It's a fantastic camera, uh, at least functionality-wise. There are other areas it's not so good, but I digress. This is the transfer PC, and this is what it's meant to do. Uh, I forget if I've made a video about what this computer actually does, like software-wise, but... Uh, I guess I could make a video on that at some point. I forget if I did or not, so I might just update it on how I do it. I'm once I uh, I have other projects going on over there, so I'll probably bundle that in with another video at some point. I just thought I'd show you guys the hardware. The type of stuff I do with this computer is uh, transferring analog audio and analog video using software like the Nero Seven Suite. Uh, sometimes I use Windows Movie Maker. Uh, what else do I use? I use Adobe Audition 1.5. Part of the reason I have to keep XP on this machine. I don't think I mentioned that. Yeah, this machine's going to run XP pretty much exclusively for the rest of its life. But it's not connected to the internet, so it doesn't really matter if it does run XP or not. So, there you have it. This transfer PC. Yeah, it runs software like Nero and Adobe Audition 1.5. Um, Audacity. Simple stuff like that. Uh, I use the Nero suite for audio and video stuff. I use Adobe Audition for uh, editing. I use Audacity for editing. Even Nero Wave Editor I use for editing and processing of 78s and stuff like that because it has a really good filter on it for stuff like that. I'll probably get into that later at some point, but there you go. The rest of the hardware is pretty simple stuff. It's just a, a Sony OptiArc DVD burner. Nothing special. In a Lee and Lee K7B case. I love these cases. Although, there's one problem I have. There's one thing I don't like about these cases. And, uh, focus. It's these uh, O-rings for the hard drives. Uh, I need more of them, and I don't know where to get them. <laughs> so, that that's, yeah. That's, that's kind of an, one annoying thing about this case. But, there you have it, guys. This is the transfer PC. I'll show it up and running in a minute. One thing I realized I didn't mention before is that this PC here, uh, the motherboard in this is from 2011, the Socket 1156 board. Well, so is the motherboard in my main computer, so they're about the same age. Just thought that was kind of funny. But I just thought I'd give you a brief look at what actually runs on this machine. I need to reinstall Windows because the drivers are all screwed up, so I need to back everything up. But as you can see, I have stuff like... Uh, Adobe Audition, the Nero Suite, Audacity. What else do I have in here? Um, VLC, Adobe Audition. 
Not a whole lot, really. I, it doesn't take much for to uh, do stuff on this machine. There's some software that I thought I had installed that I don't. There's one called Equalizer that uh, uh, allows you to apply equalization curves to different uh, sound files, which is pretty cool. I'm going to have to do a vi uh, just a video overview of the whole transfer setup uh, of one of these days. But this is just the computer setup itself. This isn't actually a video about what I do with it. But yeah, this is uh, this is the whole thing here. It runs uh, runs Windows XP, Service Pack 3, and it runs on a Pentium dual core G9650 at 2.8 gigahertz. And there you go. There's your two gigs of RAM in there. And that's your whole tour of this machine. Um, I need to reinstall Windows because it's all screwed up. But other than that, it's basically going to look the same when I'm done reinstalling Windows anyway. So, you know, there you have it. Uh, pretty cool stuff. So, uh, there you have it, folks. That's my updated uh, transfer PC. Just thought I'd show you guys. If you guys want me to elaborate on how I do my transfer work, I'll do that in a future video. Anyhow, talk to you later, guys. Have a good one, everybody. Ciao.